What is a watershed? A watershed? I couldn't even tell you. I don't remember. I should know this from ecology, but... A shed that contains water. <laughs> um, it's like where the excess water drains off into, I think. Yeah, I wouldn't know, to be honest. That's my best answer. I don't know. Um, a watershed? A house? I don't know. Yeah, we're living in the watershed right now, I'm pretty sure. Like, tiling under the crops? I don't know. A watershed is an area of land that all drains downhill to one common point. Watersheds can come in many different sizes. Larger watersheds are composed of smaller ones. Lake Laverne, for instance, collects all the water that runs off, or sheds, from Lincoln Way and the hills besides Carver and the Memorial Union. When we zoom out, Lake Laverne is part of a larger watershed, the Des Moines River watershed. And both the Des Moines River watershed and Lake Laverne watersheds are part of the Mississippi River watershed, the fourth largest watershed in the world. The unique thing about watersheds, and sometimes the confusing part about watersheds, it's not just the water body itself, it's that whole area of land around it. So if you were to cup your hands, for instance, you can see the hills and the valleys, and if rain were to fall here, all the water is going to run downhill to the lowest point. Watersheds are important because they demonstrate that what happens on the land can affect our water quality. So as water moves across the land, through the land, sheds off of the land, it can carry many different things with it. Here in Iowa and across the Midwest, some of the common things that can be carried along with our water can include sediment, another name for soil that gets picked up in the process of erosion, nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus, and those can come from, for instance, our gardens, lawn fertilizers, farm fields. Basically, nutrients are food for plants, but they can easily get picked up and carried away with our water as well. You may not think about how clean our water is when we're getting it out of a faucet or a drinking fountain. The water that's there had to be purified before it got there. While sediment is the number one pollutant of Iowa's waterways, a different pollutant has been making headlines in Iowa recently. Currently, the Des Moines Water Works is suing the drainage districts of three Iowa counties for high nitrate content. The amount of nitrogen in Des Moines drinking water had exceeded health and safety standards and now undergoes denitrification so it can be consumed. When we talk about pollution, it can come in several different forms and it's really broken down in terms of its source. And so we break the pollution down into point sources and non-point point sources. source pollution is pollution that comes from one defined pipe or point. It's pretty much what the name says it is. An example of that would be a discharge pipe from industry or discharge from a wastewater treatment plant. And point sources, in addition to coming from one defined point, they are also regulated under the Clean Water Act. And so they have specific water quality testing that has to be done to ensure that they're meeting the regulations that are. Non-point source pollution, on the other hand, is diffuse. It's coming from many different places across our landscape. So a good way to think of it is when rain falls, that rainwater moves across the land, over the land, through the land, and it can pick up a lot of different things with it as it moves. It could pick up things like soil, it could pick up nutrients, it could pick up oil from parking lots, from streets. All of those things are considered to be non-point source pollutants because we can't trace back exactly where that one particle of soil came from, where that one small piece of oil came from. So non-point source covers a much larger area and we can't pinpoint it back to one exact location. CEO of Des Moines Water Works, Bill Stowe, says that he is very confident that these are clear point source groundwater polluters that are coming from the agricultural sector. Agriculture is currently considered a non-point source of pollution. Some people believe that the high nitrate content can be attributed to the cumulative effect. That is, the combination of everyone's involvement in the nitrogen loading. Others feel that a specific point source cannot be determined. Each of the different types of pollutants can have different impacts on the water. One example, just to illustrate kind of the big picture of how it's all connected, 
I'd talk, like to talk a little bit about nutrients and the impacts that they can have on our water, both here in Iowa and further downstream. So as water moves across the land, as it moves through the land, it can carry nutrients with it. The implication there is that when these nutrients end up in our lakes, our ponds, they can end up feeding aquatic organisms like the algae that live there. It's sort of like an all-you-can-eat buffet. They grow like crazy and then those algae can kind of take over the water body and we can see that when we get the really green color in a lot of our lakes, ponds, especially in the warm summer months because these are living organisms so they're metabolizing, they're living all year long but in the warmer temperatures they're metabolizing a lot more quickly and they've got the nutrients there so they're growing like crazy and you can end up having some water bodies where almost the whole surface is covered with those algae. So that's one impact close to home. The same thing is actually happening on a larger scale across the whole Mississippi River watershed or the Mississippi River Basin. So Iowa is a big contributor sending nutrients downstream as are several of our neighboring states as well. Much of this comes from our agricultural production. About 80% of it is related to agricultural production. And then a lot of the rest can come from our urban areas, from lawns, gardens, things like that. So these nutrients move downstream, they go down the Mississippi River, and they end up in the Gulf of Mexico. So what's the deal there? Is this a big deal at all? We get to the Gulf of Mexico, and the same thing is happening. Basically, those nutrients are feeding algae in the Gulf of Mexico. To the point that, again, those algae are growing like crazy. It's like an all-you-can-eat buffet. Well then, when the algae die and decompose, decompose by bacteria, bacteria use up the oxygen that's in the water. So then we get to a point where we have low dissolved oxygen, a situation that's called hypoxia, or is often called a dead zone, because the dissolved oxygen levels in the water are so low that other aquatic organisms some of the higher life forms, fish, crustaceans, they can't actually live there because there's not enough dissolved oxygen for them to be able to survive. So that's where that dead zone nickname came from, but it's actually a really serious challenge in the Gulf of Mexico. The size of the dead zone, um, it depends, it fluctuates seasonally, but um, many years it's actually been the size of the state of New Jersey. Nutrients may contribute to water pollution, but they're not the only one. One of the types of pollutants that's getting in our water these days, it's actually viewed as an emerging contaminant, are pharmaceuticals and personal care products. Things that we use every single day. This includes things like soap, shampoo, toothpaste, mouthwash, basically everything that goes down our sinks, as well as things like pharmaceuticals. We take medications as part of our everyday lives, but our bodies aren't 100% efficient machines. So some of those medications can leave our bodies as part of our waste as can caffeine. This is a really interesting one. It's intriguing. We're a highly caffeinated society. If we think about coffee, we think about soda, we think about energy drinks, we consume those and some of that caffeine again leaves our body with our waste. Well all this comes full circle in that scientists are starting to find elevated levels of caffeine and of some of these different pharmaceuticals in our rivers, lakes, and streams in some of our water bodies. Perhaps we can use just a bit less so that we're sending less down into our wastewater systems and into our water systems altogether. Some of the other things that can get in our water too include things like bacteria, animal waste, pet waste, herbicides, oil, all kinds of things. So essentially water is a really powerful force and as it moves across the land it can carry all kinds of things with it.